Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. From this video onwards, I'll be starting with classless IP addressing. Here we are dealing with to study classless interdomain routing that is also referred as CIDR. And to understand this topic, let me tell you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. So first I'll be explaining you disadvantages of classful addressing. We have seen class pool addressing like there are five classes class A, class B, class C, class D and class E. And there are so many disadvantages which is there with class pool addressing and that I will be discussing over here. After that I will explain you how many basics are there with classless IP addressing that I will explain you by one practical example. Then I will explain you what are the rules that we need to follow for classless IP addressing and at last I will give you one practical example of computer network by which you can easily understand how classless addressing happens. So let us see first how many disadvantages that is there with classful addressing. So with classful addressing so many disadvantages are there like here we are wasting IP addresses, scalability issues are there as well as lack of flexibility is there. Let me show you it by practical examples like when you talk about class A. So with class A, how many network IDs are there? So total 126 network IDs are available. With each network IDs, how many host that is possible? 2 to the power 24 minus 2. This minus 2 that we are doing, why the reason is one IP that will be there for representation of network and second IP that will be there for broadcasting inside a network. So with class A, 126 network IDs are possible and with each network ID, there will be 2 to the power 24 number of hosts. 2 to the power 24 is a huge number, right? So many times you will be observing no company is having that many hosts. No company needs that many IPs, but that is available with class A. So here you will be wasting so many IP addresses. When you talk about class B, when you talk about class B, how many network IDs are available? That will be 2 to the power 14. And with each network ID, how many hosts are possible? That will be 2 to the power 16 minus 2. So here also number of hosts are too many for one network ID. Right. Although we are having so many network IDs available with class B. Right. But with single network ID, if somebody is interested about, let us say, 32 computers or 32 IPs. Right. So in that case, here you will be wasting too many IPs, right? When you talk about class C, so in class C, how many network IDs are available? In class C, 2 to the power 21 network IDs are available and with each ID, you will be having 2 to the power 8 minus 2 number of host. So here, you can say here we are wasting too many network IDs even if some network is not having a need, right? Secondly, scalability issue is there. Why the reason is with each ID, with each class, fixed number of IPs are available. You cannot scale it, right? So scalability issue is there as well as flexibility issue is there. Like, like as if somebody is having a requirement of 16 IPs, then is it possible by having a class A, B, C? Yes, it is possible. But as if you use in that way, in that case, you will be wasting IP addresses. So with the wastage, things are possible, right? So lack of flexibility, scalability and wastage of IPs that is happening over here. See, insufficient routing will happen. Why insufficient routing will happen? The reason is here, three level hierarchy is there. You see, first is there based on class. After class, there is network ID. And after network ID, you are having host ID over here. So here, you can say only three level hierarchy is there. Right now we are talking about internet. So in internet, for example, if you want to reach to my home, do you think like by three levels you can reach over here at my home? Like you will have to come to India. In India, Gujarat. In Gujarat, Surat. In Surat, Katargam. In Katargam, uh, street, after street, you will have to come to Lakshmi Narayana Society. In Lakshmi Narayana Society, you will have to come to to 36 number. So you will be observing 7-8 levels of hierarchy is there. So by 3 level hierarchy, insufficient routing will happen. Right. So we need to increase 
we need to provide more resolution to this hierarchy and that we can do it by having classless internet interdomain routing right see address space exhaustion that will happen why the reason is number of network ids if you count this then that will be that cannot provide services to entire globe the reason is right now in this entire globe there are total 785 crore people and for that you need to have so many network ids by 32 bits of ipv4 addressing it is next to impossible as per this hierarchy right see security concern will be there like for example if you talk about large network like as if i talk about google's network then there will be so many computers right it will be there in terms of hundreds of thousands of ips then there will be security issue if you if you bisect that network into smaller segments then obviously you can, you can resolve the issues of security but for larger network like with class a security concern will be more why the reason is number of ips are more over there right and maintenance issue will be there so maintenance and security that is that is even challenging thing in computer network right so those issues are there with this class pool addressing as well as as i have discussed like wastage of ip address scalability issue lack of flexibility insufficient routing that will happen and these are the disadvantages and to overcome all those disadvantages we are we are going for classless internet interdomain routing cidr so let us see first how many basics are there with classless ip addressing. so in basics of classless ip addressing here we are not having any classes for any network it is purely based on blocks like if you have seen class pool ip addressing in that we were been having five classes class a b c d e right here we are not having any classes it is purely based on block the internet engineering task force introduced cidr see cidr that is classless ip addressing right in 1993s to replace the previous class pool network addressing architecture on the internet so before 1993 we were been using class pool addressing with five classes right and this internet engineering task force they have introduced cidr to overcome all these issues like these were the issues that were there with those ip addressing which were there as per classes right and to overcome that they have introduced cidr in that now you will be observing ipv4 ip addressing that will be having similar structure only few differences are there like you see size will be of 32 bits only and you will be representing that as per one octave dot second octave dot third octave dot fourth octave see that is how you will be representing it right it, it will not change only thing is basic structure that will be having two things only one is block id and second is host id let me explain you that by notation see x dot y dot z dot w backslash n that is how notation is there see this x y z and w those are octaves it is having size of 8 bits and its value will ranges from 0 to 255 as we have seen it with earlier version right see this backslash n that explains number of bits for mask see this n is the number of bits for mask or you can say the number of bits for a block let me show you by practical example and here in this practical example i'll explain you what is the meaning of this entire ip address like if you observe see what is written 185.10.22.66 backslash 28 that is written so what is the meaning of this see this 28 that explains number of bits per number of bits for mask right so you should know this is having size of 8 bits right this is having size of 8 bits this is having size of 8 bits and this is having size of 8 bits so this 28 how that 28 will be happening that 28 will be as per this 8 bits plus 8 bits plus 8 bits and see this is 24 plus 4 so 4 bits that will have to take it from this 66 right so what i'll be doing is let me write this again 185 dot 10 dot 22 and now i am just representing this 66 in terms of binary see how to represent this 
first bit first bit that will be having value 128 so this is lower than 128 so i'm writing 0 then second bit that will be having value 64 so 66 is greater than 64 so i'm writing 1 so 64 is there with us now 32 will be there then 16 will be there then 8 will be there then 4 will be there now you see 64 plus 2 so after 4 there will be 1 so 64 plus 2 that will be 66 and then after 2 there will be 1 so that will be 0 so 64 plus 2 that will be 66 so this is how we can represent this into binary now in terms of bits in terms of bits we need to understand this so see this is of 8 bits this is of 8 bits 16 this is 24 now 4 bits with this we need to consider so up to this up to this we need to have masking right up to this we need to have masking now based on that what you can understand you see based on this you can understand network id network id or you can say block id network id or you can say block id and you should know network id or block id that will be the lowest ip of given block or network network id or block id that will be lowest id for given block or network so see this is 185 this is 10 this is 22 that will stay as it is right but you see what is this this is 64 so 64 and then backslash 28 see this is what you'll have to write for network id right now if question is there based on what will be broadcast ip what will be broadcast ip for this given network right so broadcast ip broadcast ip that will be that will be highest highest value of that ip in given network so what will be highest value see this this 28 bits that will be as it is like 185.10.22 that will be as it is right now you see here this is what 64 but with broadcast see after mask bit all bits should be one so this 0010 which is what 466 but for broadcast this bits that should be one so 1111 that will be that will be for broadcast id so if this is 1111 then this value will be 15 15 plus 64 that will be 79 so you can say broadcast id that is 7 last octave that will be 79 over here and then you will have to write backslash 28 see this is how we represent this right now there can be question like how many hosts are there with given ip of network id so number of host number of host that will be see how many bits that is there for host id you see block id that is having 28 bits right so with host you can say 32 minus 32 minus 28 right so that gives you how much 4 bits so 2 to the power of 4 but out of this 2 bit, two ips are reserved for broadcast and network representation so minus 2 that you will have to do but sometimes they may ask you how many ips are there with given network right so number of ips you can say number of ips that will be simply 2 to the power 4 only right but how many hosts can be there with given network so that will be 2 to the power 4 minus 2 right so that is how we can identify each and every parameter from given ip so these many questions may come from representation right so you should be clear about this now let me discuss about rules of classless ip addressing so first rule that is there based on addresses should be continuous contiguous so how it it should be contiguous so let me take this same example over here like if i say this is my uh, this is my network id uh, and that network id that is same as i have considered over here so 185.10.22.64 backslash 28 right so how addresses should be contiguous so see addresses should be contiguous means with this given network whatever ips are there that should be there in sequence 
like next IP that should be having last octave that can be 65, 66, 67. See, that is how it should be contiguous, right? See, next point is what? Number of addresses in block must be in power of 2. So, if you observe here, we have calculated number of number of number of addresses. So, number of addresses were 2 to the power 4. So, here number of addresses, number of addresses that were number of addresses that were how many? That were 2 to the power 4. So, see, it should it must be having power of 2, right? And last is first address of every block must be evenly divisible with size of block. So, here what is the size of block? 2 to the power 4. Size of block that is 2 to the power 4. And this is what network ID. So, if you divide this by uh, 16, then it is, is it divisible? Yes. See, you don't need to divide this by entire, uh, entire value. You just need to divide it with last, last octave over here. Right. So, with last octave, what is the value? 64. 64 divided by 60. So, that is divisible. So, you can say this is this is following rules of classless IPs. So, basic three rules are there. IPs should be contiguous and you should know number of addresses that should be there in power of two. Like with one network, there can be there can be one IP, there can be two IP, there can be four IP, there can be eight IP, right? That is how it should be having power of two. And here, first address of that given network, that will be obviously IP address uh, of network or you can say IP address of block, right? Or you can say block IP. So, that must be divisible by size of block, right? So, that, that is how rules are there. Now, I am going to explain you one very interesting example based on CIDR. Now, I am going to explain you one practical example that was implemented in some region of USA in late 1990s. See, IANA that is providing that blocks to companies. Like here, MCI is a telephone provider. So, obviously, uh, MCI will be having a need of so many IPs, right? So, IANA has given one block to MCI. And that block was there as per 208.128.0.0 backslash 11. So, here, what is the meaning of this? See, backslash 11 means here mask size that is of 11 bits. So, as if mask size that is of 11 bits, how many hosts can be there with MCI? If you observe the format, I have explained that, right? Block ID and host ID. In total, 32 bits are there. So, with block, here we are having how many bits? 11 bits. So, how many, how many IPs are given to this MCI? 2 to the power, 2 to the power 32 minus 11 means 2 to the power 21. So, 2 to the power 21 means more than 2 million, right? So, that many, that many IPs were given to MCI. This is obviously network ID, right? This is what? Network ID. If you wanted to have host ID, then after 11 bits, you will have to provide all ones over here, right? If you observe, see, this is what 208. And after that, if you observe from here onwards, these all are 0 for network ID, right? So, for this octave, you see 1 and then 7 zeros means 128, right? That is how this ID is there. And with this MCI, there were how many hosts? 2 to the power 21 number of hosts that is possible. Now, MCI is also giving services to many companies. Like there is one another company autom named as Automation Research System in USA. So, Automation Research System have took services from MCI. Now, if you observe network ID of Automation Research System, then that is what? 208.130.28.0 and backslash 22 is written. So, what is the meaning of 22? 22 means mask size that is of 22 bits. So, you see one octave that is having 8 bits, then second octave that is having another 8 bits means 16 bits, then here up to 6 bits only that mask is there, right, up to 6 bits, means total 22 bits are there. So, you see this is 208, then this is what, 128 plus 2, so that is 130, and then here you see triple zero, triple one, and double zero, right, 
So, this is what? This is what? 16. Then 16 plus 8, 24. 24 plus 4, 28. And these are 0, 0. So, that is what? Network ID of automation research system. Right. And with this, with this, how many hosts can be there? So, number of hosts with automation research system that will be 2 to the power, 2 to the power 32 minus 22. So, that will be 10 minus 2 that you need to have, right. But I am just writing that in terms of number of IPs available for this company. So, that will be 2 to the power 10, right. One IP will be there for representation of this, net, uh, this network and second IP that will be there for broadcasting inside this network, right. So, that is why you need to subtract 2 every time when it comes to practical number of hosts, right. Now, you see this company that is also providing services to their sub companies like ARS public servers. So, this company was having public servers and that was having that was having network IV as per 208.130.29.0 backslash 24. So, what is the meaning of this mask size that is of 24 bits. So, 3 octaves 8 plus 8 plus 8 24. So, 3 octaves that is therefore mask. So, this 3 octaves, this 3 octaves that is having this value only and last octave that will be having all zeros for network ID representation, right. So, with this servers, how many hosts can be there? So, 32 minus 24, right. So, that will be giving you 8 bits. So, 2 to the power 8 number of uh, 2 to the power 8 number of IPs are available for this and this ARS public server has given one website domain to one company that was freesoft.org. So, you see freesoft.org that is having that is having IP address 208.130.29.33 right and backslash 32 means there is only one IP there is only one IP that is the single IP. The reason is mask size that is of 32 bits only, right. So, this is what the company who is receiving services from ARS public servers and ARS public servers that is working under automation research system and this automation research system is taking services from MCI and MCI have uh, booked their blocks of IPs from IANA, right. And see, this is how complete hierarchy is happening. Right now, like for example, right now, if I am using my mobile from U broadband, right, then that U broadband is taking services from some company. Now, that company may be taking services from other company, and that is how hierarchy may be there, right. And that is happening based on blocks over here. You can observe it is not happening based on uh, classes, like we have seen class A, class B, class C, class D, right. In that, there were fixed classes, right. Here, there is no such class. Everything is happening in terms of blocks. So, FreeSoft is having only one IP. But if you observe ARS public server that is having how many IPs? That is there based on blocks. 2 to the power 8. With automation research system, there were 2 to the power 10 number of IPs. Right. Out of that, it have given 2 to the power 8 to this. And out of 2 to the power 8, one service that was given to FreeSoft.org. See, that is how block wise IPs can be arranged and that is why you will be observing CIDR that is very useful till 2019 this was effectively implemented right now there are so many other things that is happening in computer network that even I will be discussing in future coming videos right like how IPv6 how IPv6 framework is there and how exactly routing is happening so everything that I will be explaining you in future coming videos probably up to uh, for this topic this is sufficient and still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video